Hey guys, in this video I want to share two of the most useful functions in Houdini, Premium V and XYZ Disk. These two go hand in hand and come up all the time when working with any kind of geometry. So I want to give you a few examples of how you could use them. If you want to see how I use them in my own projects, I have a few in-depth and more intermediate courses that you can check out. Link will be in the description. So let's start off with the Premium V function and for this example I have a simple sphere to which I apply some noise and then I recompute the normals just so we don't have shading issues and over here I have a simple point which is at the origin 0 0 0 this point goes into an attribute wrangle as input 0 and my sphere goes into input 1 of this attribute wrangle and I will actually just preview both of these inside a merge All right, so I want to preview them together so let's just imagine that I have a point in space and I'll just use one point for now to illustrate what the Premium V does. And so this is how the function looks in the documentation. So, so this will be Prim UV. And the first thing that it needs is a geometry. So we will look at our sphere, which will be the second input in our wrangles. So that will be one over here. And then it says attribute name, which is a string. So let's say for now that we want to find the position. So that will be P. Then it says prim num, and this will be the primitive number to which we want to look at. So let's just specify a random number for now, and maybe let's just go with 17. And then we need a vector that tells us where exactly on this primitive with the number 17, where exactly do we want this point to look at? So let's just again use some random values for now just as a placeholder. So let's maybe say 1.7 and 0 0.4. And so this completes our function. So this point will look at this geometry, which will be 1, and it's going to look at a primitive. And each primitive in Houdini has a number and we can check this by turning on this display primitive numbers and we can see that they all have a number. So let's say maybe that we select this primitive over here and so this will be the primitive with a number of 17. So this point will be now looking at this primitive number and this UVW is a vector that tells us where exactly on this primitive do we want to look. So we can see that this whole surface can be represented through coordinates that go from 0 to 1 in the U and V space. So maybe for this primitive this can be the U which goes from 0 to 1 and maybe this can be the V that also goes from 0 to 1. And then any point on this surface can be represented or found using these coordinates. And it's important to note that these coordinates that PrimUV uses are not the same as regular UV coordinates that you can find in, in most 3D package softwares. So if we go to the documentation for the PrimUV, we can see that it says this function specifies the position using intrinsic primitive UVs. So intrinsic primitive UVs means that each primitive that a geometry contains has its own sort of personal primitive coordinates that go from 0 to 1. So if I were to grab a different primitive, let's say this one over here, this one also has its own intrinsic UV coordinates that maybe go from 0 to 1 on the U and 0 to 1 on the V. Okay, so this covers the whole area. Similarly, a curve is also a primitive that has intrinsic UV coordinates along its length. Only in the case of the curve, it only has the U value, since it doesn't need extra dimensions to determine a point. So a U value on a curve will go from 0 to 1, and for example, if I want to find a point that's halfway along the curve, I can specify and say the U will be equal to 0 0.5. And so in Houdini, if I have a point in space, and I'll just maybe drag this over with a transform and just place this outside of my geometry. For this example, it won't matter exactly where it is, but uh, let's just preview both at the same time. So here is my point and my geometry. And let's say I want this point 
to look at maybe this primitive over here. So I can turn on my primitive number display and we can see that this primitive is has a number of 482. So in this wrangle, I set up this primuv function like how we set it up over here. Only instead of hard coding the values for my primitive number and the uvw number, I turn this into editable channels. So back in Houdini, we can see that there is a channel to specify which primitive we, we want to look at and also the uvw position where we want to look at. So these are now editable channels. So in order to make this point look at this primitive, we can just type the primitive number over here. So this will be 487. And for the UVW position, I'll just leave this as 0.0. .0. Finally, I want to look at the position attribute of this primitive. And I store it in a variable vector, which is called simply pause. Okay. So if I now set the position of this point to be equal to the position which we found on this primitive, we can see now that the point snaps to this primitive and it snaps at the 0, 0 location. Now as I change the values of this UV position, we can see how this point moves across the surface of this primitive. Okay, so you won't usually do this, you won't probably ever spe manually specify where exactly you want this point to land, except maybe in a few rare cases. But this is just to illustrate how exactly this works. So combining these two values, we can obtain any point on the surface of this primitive. And in this case, we are grabbing the position of the primitive, but uh, we can also grab any attribute really. So let's grab this whole line over here and I will copy paste this. And instead of grabbing the position, I will grab the normal. So I will make another variable called uh, n. And instead of looking for my p, I will look for the n. Okay, and then I can set, let's just make, me, make this a little bit bigger. And now I can simply set the n attribute for the point to be this n variable that we found. And now as I turn on the normal display, we can see that we have our n. And you can see that this is the interpolated result of these three points that are creating this surface. So as I drag this around, I can demonstrate this easier by turning on this attribute noise. So this is a noise that will disturb my normals. And maybe let's just offset this a bit. Okay, so let's go back to our example and we can see that as I move across the surface, this will give me my interpolated normal. So you can see how the normal changes. So in our geometry based simulation course, we use this method to make our particles look at the entire geometry surface and grab the interpolated value of a costume direction vector that we created. So this is the power of prim UV is that it finds the interpolated value of any attribute from a surface. And if I were to instead of using this sphere use a curve, so I have a curve over here. Okay, so this is a curve with a resample and I'll plug this as my geometry inside the prim UV and preview both of these, so the point and the premium V, we can see that the curve has a primitive number of zero. So I'll just type over here zero and make sure that this is plugged in the second input. Okay, we can see it's snapped to the curve. And for a curve, we only have the U attribute, which is going along the curve and we can animate this U attribute like so. So this is how we will animate the point along the curve. So this just goes from zero to one. And we only need one value for this. We don't need to make this a vector. In the case of XYZ dist, I have another example set up over here. So we have a bunch of points scattered over here to the right. We have the same geometry source that we had earlier. And these both are inputted inside a wrangle. So the points go in input zero and the geo goes in input one. And we can preview both of these together. And what XYZ dist is going to do is it's going to take the points and for each point it's going to trace the shortest path to the surface. So let's maybe say that for this point over here, it sort of draws an invisible line to the closest point on the surface of the geometry. So maybe this one falls 
somewhere over here. So then I can store this distance over here in a float or uh, an attribute. And maybe this distance for this point will be 0 0.7. And maybe from this point over to the closest uh, point on the surface, maybe this will be 1.3 and so on for all the points. So in Houdini, I can grab this triangle and I will say, let's say xy, let's type the function xyz dist. So I want this to look at my geo, which is input 1, and I want to find the distance to the surface from each point's position, so at P. And I can store this in an attribute, which I will simply call at dist equals, and if I go to my geometry spreadsheet, now I can see the distance from each point to the closest point on the surface of the geometry. Okay? So this dist attribute or value is useful information by itself, which we can use to do a lot of things. But this xyz dist function comes in another form. As I mentioned earlier for this point, let's say that the closest point on the surface for this point is over here. And let me just make this a different color. So XYZ dist computes the distance, but it can also output the number of the primitive it hits and also the parametric UV coordinate where this hits. So these are the same things that we talked about with the prim UV function, which is to say that maybe this primitive number, so the number of this primitive can be I at prim, which will get me the number of the primitive. So let's maybe say that this primitive number is 27. And it will also give me the parametric UV coordinates for this primitive. So this will be V at UVW. And this could be maybe 0 0.3 and 0 0.9, just as an example. So these values put together can give me exactly the location and the primitive number where this point will land on the surface. So in Houdini, we can use the second version of this XYZ dist function. And after we specify from which location to generate the distance, we can also output the primitive number, so I at prim, and the UV coordinates for this point. So V at, in this case, UVW, so obviously you can name these attributes however you want. I've seen maybe some people use hit num for the number of the primitive which has been hit uh, and uh, hit pause, so where exactly it's been hit. But uh, I just want to, uh, I'll just keep this simple and just use uvw and i at prim. So now when I look at my geometry spreadsheet, we can see that we also have this prim attribute and the uvw attribute. And now since we have the primitive number and the UV position on the surface, we can use primUV to get any attribute from the surface geometry, which in this case will be the position. So in order to grab the position, I'll create a vector pose, and I will say this is equal to primUV. And again, I will look at the geometry. I want to grab the position, so P, and I will use the primitive number and the UV coordinates that we generated with the XYZ dist function. So the attributes that we output here with the XYZ dist, I can now plug them inside this uh, prim UV function. So I'll type I at prim and V at UVW. So now for each point, I stored the position on the geometry where this hits. And if I set the position of the point to be equal to this pose that we created. Now all of our points snap to the surface of the geometry using the shortest path. So this is basically how you can make any points stick to a surface. The problem here is that if I were to animate this geometry, so in my mountain sop, you can see that there is animation. So this animate noise is set, is turned on. If I were to play this now, you can see that it snaps to the surface, but the points are kind of swimming all over the place. And this is not exactly the result that we would expect from a sticking to geometry effect.
What happens here is that this function, this XYZ list is calculating every frame. So if I were to turn this on for off for a second, we can see that maybe in the first frame, so at frame one, this point is closest to this surface over here. So this point at a different frame, this will no longer be the case. So now this point may be closer to somewhere around over here, as opposed to being close to this primitive over here. So what we are outputting here with this prim and UVW attribute will change every frame. And what we want to do is compute these two attributes just on one frame. So in this case, it will be frame one. It can be any frame, but I'll just use frame one. So I can freeze the input geometry. I will add a time shift over here and I will freeze this at frame one. Okay, so now we are only computing the prim and UVW attributes on the first frame. So now if I play this, we can see that the particles are stuck on the first frame, but they are no longer following the surface when the geometry gets updated. And this is because when we set the position, so the new position using this prim UV attribute, this prim UV function is looking at the second input, which is this frozen geometry. So since this prim UV attribute is looking at the geometry that doesn't move, when we set the position, this pose variable that we created where we store the position will also be static. We want this prim UV to look at the deforming geometry. So before we froze the geometry with this time shift. So what I can do is I will drop another attribute wrangle and place it after our XYZ dist. Place this over here. And I will grab this uh, prim UV function and the setting of the position lines and I will just cut paste them inside my second wrangle and I will make this second wrangle look at the deforming geometry. Okay, so now we can see that the point snapped and if I preview, now the points stick as they should. So I can rename this to XYZ dist and this will be then the function that grabs the primitive attribute and UV coordinates and then this will be the prim UV so now this will use those attributes from XYZ dist to grab the position attribute from the surface and is going to set the position of the points to that surface position. And so this is one of the many ways that you can use this XYZ dist function. So after you grab the surface information, you can then use premium V to grab attribute from that surface position. So we can grab the normal, we can grab uh, the P in this case. You can obviously grab any kind of attribute that you want. And this XYZ dist and premium V function comes up all the time in simulations where there's some sort of geometry involved.